Hello everyone. Welcome to Midas Expert webinar series. So today's topic is Super T girder bridge design as per AS5100. So myself Suman Dhara. So I'm working as a senior structural engineer at Midas IT. Previously I worked in CHTM as a bridge engineer and worked on a couple of Middle East and India bridge projects. So currently I am providing Midas technical support to engineering firms all over the globe. So these are the contents of my presentation. First, I'll give an introduction to Super T Bridge. Next, let's look at the modeling and analysis of Super T Bridge. We'll take a sample bridge. Uh, we'll see how uh, various modeling methods can be used to model these Super T Bridges uh, and how we can quickly perform the preliminary design using our PSE composite bridge wizard in Midas Civil. Next, after the analysis, we'll see how we can uh, design the Super T bridge as per AS5100. And at last, I'll take some Q&A. First, the introduction part. So Super T girder section is shown in this figure. Uh, so this Super T bridge is a common choice among the designers for medium spans ranging from 18 to 35 meters. So Super T section is a precast pre-stress section with open or closed flanges. So we can also have a closed flange Super T. These Super T girders can be used for straight as well as highly skewed bridges. So there are main advantages in using this section. The first one is having a good torsional resistance. Next we can change the flange width as per uh, our need and these are aesthetically appealing as well. So due to these advantages, uh, the Super T girders have become a common choice among the contractors for medium span bridges. Next, let's see the modeling and analysis of a Super T bridge. So regarding the superstructure, there can be various scenarios like uh, the girders being this simply supported or continuous. Or if you have a skew bridge, then we'll have a skew girder system. And if the bridge is curved, then we can have straight super T's uh, and have a curved deck on above it. And based on the boundary condition like the substructure, it, the substructure can be integral with the superstructure or the super T girders can be uh, used with the bearing. So that time it would be a bearing type super T bridge. So basically all this type of superstructures can be modeled in Midas Civil. So we have two approaches. One is manual modeling where we can start uh, preparing our finite element model using node and elements from the scratch. Or we can directly use PSE composite bridge wizard which is there in Midas Civil directly. Such that the program will create the model for you and we also have a flexibility to edit it at, as per our need after the wizard run. So PSC Composite Bridge Wizard has uh, a big advantage in preliminary design as the preliminary design involves uh, two, three trials to freeze the sections, the spacing between the girders, the debonding lengths. So based on that, uh, we have to change the model. So manual changing would take uh, a lot of time. So if we use this wizard, it would work as a template and we can recall this wizard again and again and we can change the parameters and check the stress limits if are in uh, in compliance. So that's how uh, this PSE composite bridge wizard can be advantageous in preliminary design. So for a preliminary design, it, uh, we have uh, general provisions that are listed here in this slide. So span range for the various depths of unit. So these are the unit depth. Uh, and this is the span range. If span is around uh, 28 meters, then we can go for type 3, which is 200 mm depth super T. And the width of the flanges on the super T beams can be varied to give an overall width of section ranging from minimum 1200 mm to 250, 2500 mm. And typical top slab deck thickness can range from 160 to 200 mm. So 160 mm is a good start. And uh, for 750 and 1000 mm 
T. So for T's we can use 12.7 mm strands and for larger depths we can use 15.2 mm strand. So this would be our sample bridge that we'll be modeling and uh, designing as per AS510. So it's a three span super T girder superstructure. First span being 32 meters, second is 35 meters, third span is 32 meters. So we'll be not modeling the abutments, instead we'll take the boundary conditions and we'll model the intermediate piers. So the total width of the bridge is 17.76 meters. So this is my base model that I have prepared. Here in the material properties, you can go to properties here. I have added C50, C40 and steel material property. This is not required. C50, we can select the type of design and the standard AS17 and select the concrete weight. If we change this to none, we can give the properties and give the weight density as zero if you want a dummy material. So these are the material properties. Next, the time dependent properties like the creep and shrinkage. For C50 and C40 grade, I have selected the coat. Given the grade of concrete, the compressive strength, then one meter as hypothetical thickness. The program will auto calculate this H and trying basic shrinkage strain. I'll take 1000 and then the power of minus 6 for now. So these two are done. Then we have the compressive strength variation for C50 and C40 grade. Just select the code and then give the compressive strength at 28 days. The rest of the program will calculate based on the duration uh, and the time uh, sequence in construction stages. And then we have to link this time dependent properties creep and shrinkage and compressive strength variation to the base material so i have linked it then we have section properties i have created this section properties like first section is for peer column 1.2 meter dia next peer cap 0.8 by 2.1 cross beam then t4 or t5 so you can go to add here we have PSC. We do not need to uh, use section property calculate at uh, bring and import the super tickets we already have in database. We can select PSC value and here section DB. So as per Australian standard and New Zealand standard, we have the standard sections. Yes, we can select the type and here we have the standard sections. So we can select them. So I have selected T5 and given the parameters for design. So the top slab thickness, bottom BT and HT and 120 mm. And then the shear locations, shear check locations at Z1, Z2 and Z3. And I'll keep this as auto and give the section offset as center top. Once the girder uh, has been created, we have to create the composite section. So for that we can go to composite and then select composite PSC and import the girder. So the girder is there and then we can we can give the dimensions of the deck and the section is red. Then we can select the material for the slab and the girder. So this is C40 and So we have the modular ratio, density ratio all taken up by the program. So that's how I've created this composite section. So this we'll be using for the, next I have the tendon property. So I have taken 15.2 mm strand and then the relaxation, you can select 15.2, one strand and the program will calculate the area and strand diameter. Rest all I'll keep the same. Now we can go to the structure tab. What we can do is we can use the manual method of starting from creating nodes, creating elements, extruding, trans translate, all those operations we can use and prepare our final determinant model. And uh, the second approach is to use this pre composite bridge wizard. 
where we have the gutter type we have the main tabs here starting from layout to construction stage in the layout we have to give the layout information sectional information then the tendon information load and then the construction stages once we click ok the program will create the model for you and then we have a flexibility to edit the model as per our need and we can proceed to the analysis so I'll open a uh, wizard information that I already have so first is as per our uh, bridge spans we have three spans 32 35 and 32 meters I'll select all frame we also have deck as a plate and girder as a frame we can select this or non composite so we'll select all frame composite deck width 17.76 spacing between the girders 0.15 spacing B 0.25 then the continuous girder at first to access the online help so here I'll show you that figure of continuous girder so if we turn on the continuous girder option the girder would be continuous if it isn't then we have a simply supported condition so right now I'll take the girder as continuous here the radius we can give the radius if it is a curved bridge where the deck is curved and the girders are straight you can see the alignment girders would be straight and the deck would be curved you can give the radius if you want and then we can model with boundary condition or with the substructure so we have spacing here given so we can utilize this and we have a peer cap so I'll select the material and the section for the peer cap and for the peer column Peer column height I'll take it as 9 meters then the spacing this as 12 meters so there would be two peer column and uh, then we have a peer cap and whose length is uh, equal to the total deck width next we'll go to the section tab here we have the deck thickness 180 mm deck material and the girder and the diaphragm material I'll take the superstructure girders has 6 for now and this spacing has to be calculated so I'll try to fit the 6 girders as that this would match 17.76 deck width and we have the diaphragm section here if you want to we can define we already have defined here cross beam and here we have the advanced diaphragm so we have 3 spans so at PS supports we can provide the diaphragm at the intermediate of a span we can provide the diaphragm and also at the end support I'll turn off the end support for now and here we have peer and intermediate we have to select the section which is cross beam and then give the divisions per span so you can give the divisions per span so this would be intermediate peer support and end so I'll take two divisions per span and then the transverse deck element there would be transverse deck elements as uh, this wizard will prepare a grillage model because we have selected all frame so the distance between the transverse deck elements spacing is 1 meter I'll take next the girder information span 1 span 2 and span 3 as we have it given in the layout 3 spans so in the 3 spans what is the section that uh, that we want we can select the girder section so here I have selected the composite T5 for all the spans sim similarly if we wanted to change the section like a closed uh, T5 section we can give this as 2 click apply and then here you can select the closed section and then give the distance till uh, what length this closed section should be and the rest the open section so right now let's take uh, only the T5 for all the spans so next in the tendon tab here we can click on guide here the section reference line we can select uh, it can be center left or right and then we can give this uh, 
pattern of strands and the tendons so uh, here as this is a pre pretension strand we have three segments uh, i mean the three spans span 1 span 2 and span 3 we can select any span and click on auto generation and here we will select the property uh, we can select the code and then the girder type once we click ok the program will generate the standard pretension strands and their pattern uh, for you so here we can also edit as per our need so if you look at the standard drawing this would be your type phi and this is the standard pretension strand pattern and then we have the debonding lens that we have to give this has to be designed by the uh, decided by the designer so so based on the stress check and the transfer stress limits uh, we have to decide the debonding lens so for now i'll take this debonding lens so here uh, if we look at the standard uh, pretension pattern so here we have the row a b c d e strand uh, rows and total 46 strands i'll consider and and the row a which is the bottom st uh, strand layer the last strands i'll, I'll consider 1 meter debonding length and in the row b we consider 1 meter for the fourth and the ninth strand and for C 1.8, 2 meters, 2.56 and for D 2 and 2.4. The same I have given here as per this figure and the same has been repeated for span 1, span 2 and span 3. So this completes the pretension strand definition here in the tendon tab. We can go to the load. So we have 17.76. So I have considered the median strip as 0 so we have 14 meters of carriageway and rest is B1 and B5 next the dead loads uh, DC before composite we can uh, apply this equally to all girders rest all if we want we can tick this and as these are generally applied at their uh, respective locations we'll turn this off and before composite Loading the sulfate wet concrete, I'll take density as 23 and the thickness 180 mm. After composite loads, I'll only consider the barrier in the bearing surface 50 plus 50 mm overlay 100 mm. I'll consider the moving load, I'll select the Australian standard. And in the defined traffic lanes, here we have to define uh, the lanes uh, in, in the form of D1, D2, and distances. To the center line of the lane from the left edge so I have quickly calculated the distances here in Excel so we have the total width and the carriageway and then the standard lane width I'll assume as 3.5 meters so we'll arrive at four lanes so these are the three four lanes of 3.5 meter width so this would be the center line distance from the left edge for lane 1 lane 2 and lane 3 and lane 4 the same has been given here next we can define the vehicles we'll later define after the wizard run we'll go to construction stage the typical construction process of PSC composite bridge is shown here in this schematic first is stage one where we have the substructure erected stage two we have the precast pretension girders that are in place then we have the concrete deck that is poured so wet concrete load would be acting and then we we deactivate the wet concrete load i mean the concrete gets hardened and there would be a composite action that will kick in that is in stage three two and then we have the after composite loads and la finally we have a stage where we only consider the duration this ensures the uh, program to capture the creep and shrinkage behavior here in the reinforcement We can select the composite section and here we can turn on the guide line something like 50 mm and then we can select the input method 
select the line give the number of bars select the diameter select the part to tech and then click add so this is how we can give the reinforcement and the shear reinforcement we can select the diameter and give the number of stirrups i mean two legged or four legged then the torsional reinforcement click apply so this is this is how we'll apply the reinforcement we close and let's save as this wizard information click save and we can recall the this wizard information again and again and uh, we can change the span or we can change add the radius or we can add the skew angle and we can change the girder spacings or we can change the section we can increase the depth we can change the strand pattern we can change the debonding lengths all these parameters can be variables and every time once we click ok the program will generate the model for you with the changes in, uh, incorporated so this helps tremendously in preliminary design to create the models quickly so the model is created so this is the straight super t girder bridge so we have six super t girders in the superstructure this would be three span 32 35 and 32 meters and these are the stages you can undo it go to the wizard again and here we can add a skew angle something like 35 degrees suppose click ok so the program has created this model and this has 35 degrees skew so we can appreciate here within no time the model is ready for you and here including the stages we have the model so let me quickly undo it and let's go forward taking the straight super t bridge the model has been generated so here we have the stages so let's see each stage one by one stage one we have the substructure then stage two we have the retention girders property girders and here we do not have any continuity so this would be simply supported girders in stage 2 and in stage 3 1 we have the wet concrete load that would be acting and next in stage 3 2 we have the composite action so then go to group activate only the girders so here we can see the composite slab whereas in stage 2 we can only see the girders here so in stage 4 we have the after composite loads like bearing surface and the barrier then in stage 5 we only have the duration that has been given as 10,000 days so that is to capture the creep and shrinkage the, and the compressive strength variation that is there now in stage one we can see the element boundary and load groups that have been created by the program stage two there would be girder and diaphragm that are activated in stage three one we have the wet concrete load in stage three two we have the wet concrete load deactivated and then we have the continuous section that is activated then in stage four we have the other loads 
after composite loads and then stage 5 nothing is activated except we have given the duration now if you look at uh, the continuous portion activate so as we have taken the continuous uh, girder option in the wizard so the program will ta has taken the same section for the continuous part so we'll try to change this and make it tech continuous so I have to add a section I'll select a rectangular section so the height we know it is 180 mm and this is 2.96 and take this as tech continuous Click OK, now center top. So the distance is 0.96, fine. Now we'll select this elements and assign the deck continuous section. So if you look at the stage 3, 2. So here we have only the deck continuity in the co composite section for construction stage this is uh, given to tell the program that in which stage the part 1 girder would be activated in, in which stage the part 2 would be activated so we have the active stage which is stage 2 the girder is activated and in stage 3 2 we have the deck activated with this material property so here we have to specify the age let's give this click OK and update all hedge so the program will recalculate the notional size okay. check this as well so this would be the notional size for part 1 girder and tech next if we look at the tendon profiles we have this many number of tendon profiles so we can see here the profile straight profile this has been created we can also manually create the tendon using this uh, function here in load temperature pre-stress here tendon profile we can manually add a tendon profile or we can go to tools click on mct command shell here we have this command of tdn profile insert data so this is the text data so here we can modify whatever the information that we want for a given tendon or for many tendons we can quickly copy this to excel modify there and paste it back and hit run such that the tendon information would change next let's proceed to moving load analysis so here we have defined the lanes these are my four lanes that are occupying my carriageway width i'll go to the load click on moving load here in the vehicles i'll add standard so as per Australian standard have to define the lanes so I think uh, in the in the wizard we have sell we did not select the Australia we have to select that so just a moment so I'll save this model So here in traffic line lanes we can create the traffic line lanes manually so we can select a reference line and give it so this can be 
and then we have to give the eccentricity with respect to this reference line and to the center line of the lane. So right now I'll skip this step and what I'll do is I'll try to import the lane information from the other model which I have developed uh, by taking Australian standard in the wizard. So I have copied that data and here I can paste it, the lane information and I can hit run. So these are my four lanes. Now I'll go to the load, moving load, I'll click on vehicles, add standard. So here, uh, let me open the standard. Yeah. So as per code for the road traffic, we have to take the critical of the six vehicles. Uh, so we'll consider some of them. The critical ones so let's consider the m1600 click apply m1600 without udl apply we'll also consider this fatigue so once we turn on the fatigue option uh, the program will consider the 70 percent of the vehicle load okay and then we'll try to consider S 1600 as well as the heavy load platform loading. So let's take the heaviest. Click OK. So these are my standard vehicles. And we have to create the moving load cases now to link between the lanes and the vehicles. So first let's create a case traffic. Here, click add, take M1600, four loaded lanes, click OK, and similarly, let's take S1600, four. So, this would be my traffic, I'll click OK. Click add. Next, uh, let's take the heavy load platform plus M1600 vehicle, the combination. So, if you look at the code, here we have the heavy load platform. And also, we should note that for heavy load platform, the lane should be adjacent. This is the correct definition. So, if we have gaps, the program will give an error. So, this is how the program will apply the lane 1 for HLP and the lane 2 for HLP. So, here let's check whether our traffic line lanes have 3.5 meter width. Yes, we have. So, I'll add, give a name as HLP plus M1600, select the heavy load platform, select the heavy load and the M1600. So, for M1600, I'll take four maximum number of loaded lanes and lane 1, lane 2 for HLP lane 2, lane 3, lane 3 and lane 4. So, the program will take the critical of uh, this 3. Click apply. Similarly, let's give it for S1600. Click apply. Next, let's create a fatigue load combination. Uh, I mean the moving load case. Here, uh, we'll take the fatigue one. And 
only one uh, lane should be loaded out of this four, the critical one. Like apply. This is fatigue. Next, let's give a moving load case of deflection with general. Here I'll only select M1600 without UTL. Give it four. Click OK. So this completes the critical uh, moving load cases. We have the traffic HLP plus M1600, HLP plus S1600 and one is the fatigue uh, moving load case. The other is the deflection which doesn't have a UTL, M1600 without UTL. Now we can perform analysis. I'll go to analysis. Let's perform analysis. So after the analysis is performed, we can check the results. Here we can prepare the load combinations first. You can go to auto generation. So the program gives you this feature where we can select the Australian standard. Select ST plus CS, which includes the static and uh, CS loads, construction stage loads. Then select the fatigue, add, click OK. So the program will generate these combinations and will have a strength envelope and the serviceability envelope. When we generate in concrete design tab, the program will recognize uh, this as strength and serviceability case. So if you are preparing it manually, we have to give this uh, categorization. Let's go and check the deformations stage wise. This is my first stage. Second stage. So here we only have the simply supported uh, super T girders. Wet concrete load. Composite action and the continuity. This is highly exaggerated. Uh, def deformations stage 4 and then stage 5 so here if we activate the girders so this is at the end of construction stages let's check the bending moment diagrams So I'll go to stage 2 and let's see the dead load. Turn of the deform. So this is the simply supported bending moment as expected. So the maximum sagging is around 2832 km meter for dead load and for tendon primary. So this is the primary effect of retention. So that is around 5365 kilonewton meter, the hogging moment. And tendon secondary would come in when we have a static indeter indeterminate structure. So here it should be less. Yeah. If we only activate the girders, so the moment is negligible. So CS summation includes the effects of all these uh, loads like the creep, shrinkage, tendon and the erection loads and the dead. So here in the construction stay analysis control we have categorized DC and DW as erection 1 and erection 2. Let's see the results at the end. So this is the summation result. And we can also check the stresses, beam stresses diagram at stage true for girder 1, I mean the part 1, the girder top, click apply. So these are the stresses, I'll activate the girder, next at the bottom. 
these are the stresses so negative indicates the compression 17.7 and finally we have at the stage 5 and so maximum compression is around 16 MPa let's see the moving load results I'll go to post CS here we only have considered the post CS loads as uh, moving load uh, moving loads but not the temperature and wind if we want we can go and apply the temperature gradient the beam section temperature and the element temperature and wind load we can apply it as a UDL static load so let's see the moving load results now in the traffic I'll see the pending movement first so, so this is a maximum bending movement and this is the minimum but the traffic moving load case where we have M1600 and S1600 envelope so MV all shows MV max and MV main together I can activate the girder so we have 5548 kilometer similarly we can uh, we can also investigate uh, using this moving load tracer feature here we have 750 element number so, so this is the element this is the element which is uh, having the maximum bending moment due to traffic case let's investigate uh, which loading position is causing this maximum moment let's take 750 J and MY pick up line so as per the standard this M1600 vehicle uh, shall be continuous or discontinuous and of any length may be necess necessary to produce the most adverse effects so the UDL can be discontinuous as well as the wheel loads so that's what we observe here the UDL is also discontinuous and the axle loads so if you look at the vehicle so P1 is 120 kN which would be divided into two V loads so that should be 60 kN each that is what being observed here and then we have the UTL let's see what is the case for HLP plus M1600 You can see the change so this is HLP and this would be our M1600 so combination is correctly considered similarly the S1600 okay so s1600 is also been correctly considered so here we have the fatigue so so only 70 percent of uh, 60 should be considered which is 42 this is also right and for the deflection we shouldn't have any udl for m1600 vehicle yes that is what being considered here So this is how we can cross check the moving load results. We can also click on detail result. So program will create a text file which includes the moving load information. So what is the variable length? What is the accompanying lane factor that's been considered? One and also we can convert this uh, loading to a static load. And we can apply the centrifugal forces if it is a curved bridge, give this information. 
and for longitudinal we can turn on the traction and braking once we click ok the text file would be created and we can copy this text file and paste it in mct command shell and then hit run such that there would be three static load cases that would be created one is for the vertical moving load uh, longitudinal and braking even the dynamic load allowance factor would be included in the uh, in the field loads and static load would represent that next let's see how we can perform detailed design of our super t girders as per as5100 you can go to psc tab select the australian standard and in the parameters we can select all i wanted to check the ultimate limit state transfer checks flexural resistance check shear resistance torsional resistance checks serviceability limit state control of cracking check so for crack control we have to give this input i'll give it as default 160 mpa we can change this and the maximum notional size next uh, this are given next we have the psc design material we have to give the grade of rebar for deck and uh, girder select the code and select the grades and in the design position we can select the entire girders but obviously this would take a bit of time for the PSC design uh, right now let's take the critical ones I'll go to beam diagram let's check the strength envelope case critical bending moment element will take so that is 750 so I'll go to the design position and give a 750j and for the output as well i'll output i'll take it as 750 j and the transfer load combination we'll select that uh, as we have auto generated the load combinations the program will pick this uh, transfer load combination this is the transfer load combination where we have dead plus pt then we can give the exposure class i'll select b1 and click and we can click apply so we can also edit all this PSE design information the input from these tables as well each and every parameter has its table we can edit it and then hit perform design so once the design is completed we can see the results in tables first the flexural strength check so this is the demand and this is your capacity then we have the shear strength checks so the program will highlight uh, in red if it is not okay then we have the combined shear and torsion checks and the stress check at in construction stages and serviceability stress check then we have finally the crack control for flexure at service loads and also for transfer this is at SLS all ok and similarly at transfer now if we wanted to see the detailed calculation we can click on excel report program will generate a detailed excel report which includes all the codal clauses and the calculation 
So this is the Excel report that's being generated. So first we have the design condition, the section properties, cross section, the transform section, materials, then the pre-stressing steel information. Then we have the reinforcement, then the effective pre-stress. Transfer check. So 0.6 FCP. We can check the code clauses. So this is 0.6 FCP. So 8.1.6.2 has been considered here. So for the concrete compressive stress check and uh, similarly we have the crack control here program will calculate the crack control for flexion and pre-stress beams as per 8.6.2.1 so let's see that clause so as per this clause so here we have the maximum increment of steel stress. This is based on the nominal reinforcement bar data. So we can input this and the program will calculate the stress, the maximum stress analysis at surface. Then pre-stress member and exposure class. Here it is B1. So this would be skipped. Then at the bottom, and this is at the girder top, the girder bottom. Then we have the flexural design for section, positive flexure. So this is the load combination that is causing the maximum demand. This is the concurrent uh, condition, M by max concurrent of this load combination. So this is the maximum moment, 18,000 kilometer per meter. Then the program will consider the axial force in tendons by strain compatibility method and it will also consider the development length and then we have the compressive force and the tensile force so the program will iterate the neutral axis and then calculate the neutral axis and we have the c by t ratio as one that means the neutral axis is correct then it proceeds for calculating the flexural resistance 8.1.2 uh, so this calculation the program performs and then it compares with the demand and the minimum strength requirements then the negative flexure same as the positive one then we have the shear design so these are your concurrent forces and this is the combination and we have the component of pre-stress in this uh, which is resisting the shear and next effective shear depth the program will calculate the effective shear depth and then the determination of longitudinal strain in the concrete for sure this is 8.2.4 clause yeah. so this is your longitudinal strain in concrete for sure this would be calculated by using this formula so here we have this the same formula that's been used and then it determines the kv and uh, theta v and then the sectional design of the beam calculate the concrete uh, shear contribution and the sh uh, shear contribution due to the shear enforcement and uh, you have the ultimate shear strength and it will compare it with the demand 
then the requirements for transfer share reinforcement, minimum transfer share reinforcement, all these things we can see the relevant codal clauses, we can compare it, uh, we can also cross check here the manual calculation and see whether the program is correctly calculating all these formulas. So then we have the proportioning longitudinal reinforcement on the flexural tensile, tensile side and next the torsional design for the section these are your demands resistance factor 0.7 and then torsional effects we know this is the formula which is given in the code for the torsional cracking moment and the determination of strain and the sectional design of the beam and the demand versus capacity so it's all okay and the minimum torsional reinforcement checks web crushing due to combined shear and torsion and finally the crack check so here in crack check the program will use SLS combination as the exposure class is B1 um, and then it will calculate the rebar stress check due to SLS combination so these are your equilibrium forces compression and tension so the program will use the uh, crack control uh, here the crack control methodology is uh, uh, is same as uh, using the fi uh, fictitious force and then trying to determine the neutral axis and the increment uh, in the steel stress so that we can find in the in the online resources the methodology so the program utilizes that and then finally finds the stresses here uh, we have a rebar stress check due to permanent effects at the SLS stress at the bottom surface so here we have the stress limitation check it tells you whether it's okay or not okay so this is your incremental stress which is maximum incremental stress which is limited by 160 MPa as an input so this is okay and finally uh, we have this checks for the exposure class if we give this so this is how uh, a detailed design report for a super T girder can be generated so all the codal uh, provisions have been incorporated step by step and we can also check the results in the tabular format quickly and uh, if we are checking the flexural strength here we have the ratio uh, of utilization ratio and if it is failing we can readily uh, get the element numbers at which they are failing and then we can quickly change the section depth or increase the stand in, uh, strands or change the lengths and also sometimes uh, it fails in the transfer I mean the stress checks so that time we can change the debonding lens quickly using this command of change tendon profile here we can select the debonding length and if you want to additionally give debonding lengths to more strands we can select them and give the debonding lengths in a group So if I would summarize what we have done till here, we have started with the PSE composite bridge wizard, we prepared the model, we changed uh, it to deck continuous, then uh, we have added the moving loads and then we ran through the analysis and saw the results, verified the moving load results and finally we performed the PSE design as per AS5100 and we have seen all the design results. And, uh, and satisfied all the codal provisions for our super T bridge superstructure. So thanks for watching. We can have Q and A now.